also you all know the conservation of mass principle actually the mass transfer the mass interactions happens for control volume so the conservation of mass principle for a control volume it is the total mass entering into the control volume during the time difference delta t and the mass leaving in the control volume the difference between the mass entering and the mass leaving it is actually the net change of the mass in the control volume all right so if we define this way the mass in mass out it is the delta m cv means in the control volume so in other word um we can say it is actually the you know the delta m cv that means the you know the mass net change of mass in the control volume it is the final mass and the initial mass the difference between these two if we want to calculate the rate of change okay if we want to calculate the rate of change with respect to time so then we will just put a dot you can see the m it was m in m out it is m dot in m dot out and then that means we just divide it means it is with respect to time right and you see we put it here the dm cv dt so this is actually the you know the, the rate of change so this is the form of the rate of change the mass you know the conservation of mass principle in in rate form so we need to use this couple of times now we'll try to understand actually the relations between the control volume and the control surface and the energy you know the mass conservation principle so if you guys uh, look here it is um it is actually the you can see this is an a random uh, arbitrary control so control volume look at this figure so this dotted red line we can say the surface it is control surface and inside this control surface this volume we can say this is control volume right so now if we um, consider a very small section here let's say just a differential section of this control volume where uh, dv you know the differential uh, volume dv and dm is the differential mass so the total you know if we say the the mass the differential mass dm what will be the differential mass guys dm is the differential mass so what will be this in, if we write in mathematically it is actually related to the density and you know the dv right the differential volume so we all know this this you know the differential volume this is differential volume this is differential mass so this differential mass it will be rho dv if we want to calculate the total volume inside this control volume i'm telling again the total volume inside the control volume so we can write it here total volume in cv in the control volume what we need to do guys here it is the differential volume so if we integrate that that means if we integrate this right so what we will get we will get it is actually um rho d b we can say this is for total control volume right or in other word we can say this uh differentiation integration style will, will cancel out each other so it is m c v and it is c v rho d v so this is the first term we got the mass the total mass inside this control volume all right so this is total mass inside the control volume now if i tell you what will be the rate of change of this mass inside this control volume or within the control volume so in rate form okay in rate form this mass of this control volumes what do we need to do guys we need to you know calculated with respect to time that means d by dt this is the rate of change of time so it will be equal to d dt right this is cv rho dv what do we did guys we just did the same thing in the left hand side and the right hand side so this is the rate of change it is now related with time so in some case that you can get some special case where there is no mass transfer no mass crossing in the control volume um you know 
especially let's say for different closed system anyways just forget about that then it will be zero this term will be zero but we don't want to i don't want to confuse you so uh, forget about that so yeah what is happening guys now i'm going to discuss some important thing if we consider um let's say the mass flow is going uh, out or coming in two cases could happen so it is going through the control surface okay so control surface so the mass flow mass flow into or out of this control volume through the control surface let's say very differential section very small section like this so let's say this is the differential area da so the mass flow through this very small differential uh, area on the control surface we will calculate so what we see here this n it is actually the unit vector and it is the direction is the outward direction so outward unit vector and it is normal um, with the control surface this the boundary is control surface what it means normal so let me show it here so let's say let's say this is the uh, control surface so normal means if it is n so normal means it will create a 90 degree angle with this surface you know what i mean so normal means this n it will create a 90 degree angle here so let's say here it is 90 degree and this v um it is actually the velocity which is related to this uh, differential area right and it creates an angle theta so the total um you know the mass flow rate it will be proportional to this normal component and you will see if we go through the books then you will get this relation this velocity v n component it is v cos theta you will see this relation there so now i would like to tell you what is inflow and outflow inflow um you know you know the definitions for you know the inflow and the outflow outflow means the flow will go outside inflow means flow will in is it in isn't it yes so now here what will happen we will get we said this is the the you know the outer vector which is normal to this area and v is the velocity and we got this velocity component normal component is v n equal v cos theta if if i write it like this if theta equal zero guys what it will be if theta is zero then we know cos zero means one right so cos zero it means one that means this v and it will be v so it will be maximum outflow you know if theta equal zero then the outflow it will be maximum because you have this is the control surface and the flow is going this way so it will be maximum out outflow but if theta equal 90 degree if theta equal 90 degree that means what it will be this v n it will be v cos 90 what is cos 90 cos 90 equal 0 so it will be 0 so that means here it will be you know this is a zero degree angle what it means so 90 degree angle means it creates a normal means 90 degree and zero means it will be kind of tangent so here we will get the minimum outflow but if theta is equal 180 then it will be again uh you know normal to those directions but it will be just due to the 180 means it is minus one so this v n it will be minus v so this direction it will be negative directions so this is eventually it will be inflow okay so what i said when this theta is 0 and 90 it is outflow right but when the theta is uh, 180 the direction will be opposite this is inflow that means the flow will come to the you know control volume so it is important and when theta is 0 we will get maximum outflow theta is 90 minimum outflow and theta is 180 still will get maximum flow but it is inflow so we can say v so if we introduce some you know um, you know vector component then we can write this uh i think i discussed most of the things so it was v cos theta 
so we can say it is actually the bn because it depends on this directions of this n the unit vector outer unit vector direction of the n now if you guys can remember previously i wrote the mass flow rate uh, delta m mass flow rate delta m it is equal rho b n d a right you can remember we did it so can i substitute this value b n can i write it it is equal v rho b cos theta d a i just substitute this value here again we can write it is equal v n so it, we can write it as b n d a i need to write down this vector so we can write it this so this is delta m the differential mass flow rate and now guys if we want to calculate the net mass flow rate you know what i said the net mass flow rate the net mass flow rate if we want to calculate we can say it is m net what do you need to do guys we need to integrate right so net mass flow rate where in or out of the control volume to the entire control surface control surface cs we are considering this control surface cs so the net mass flow rate in this control surface we can say this is cs and we can integrate it delta m it is equal c and we can say this rho v n and da can we do that guys yes we can definitely do that so this is actually the net mass flow rate so I, I will tell you go through the box you will get a lot of things if the angle theta okay we know v n it is actually v cos theta so if the angle theta is less than 90 degree then it will be outflow it will be you know positive if theta is greater than 90 degree it will be inflow uh, that in will that will be negative anyways you can see that on later on so what we got guys here the net mass flow rate for control volume in our previous uh, slide we got the net you know the, the volume in the in the in the control volume and uh, here it is in the control surface so now we know what we know we know the relation it is you know um, I showed you earlier I, I, I wrote it down earlier the mass flow in the mass flow out it is equal you know d over dt and the mass mcv right we know this we know this relation so if we write down this relation here can i write it down like this d dt m c v and uh, it will be plus m out minus m in will be zero look what i did i just put this on here and then if i subs if i just replace or transfer this two term into the right hand side so this negative it will be positive this negative it will be positive what it is guys this out mass out and mass in this is actually the net mass right so that means for this term we can replace this and this d d t m c v you look here d d t m c v we know the rate from it is equal this so we can substitute actually this equal this here so it will be you know it will be d d t it is c v control volume rho d v plus it is c s rho p n d a here this is control surface you see this is control surface and this is control volume so this is actually the general conservation of mass you know so that means the 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 rate of change of the mass within the control volume right plus the the net mass flow rate through the control surface they are equal to zero they are equal to zero so the net mass i'm telling again the net you know the rate of change of mass within this control volume it is this and 
plus the the the, the net mass flow rate through this control surface it will be equal to zero so that's actually the conservation of mass principle i will tell you guys i showed you all those calculations um, you are just looking this calculation this is for the past time for you so it's hard to understand 100 percent in past time so have a look again i believe you will understand that's not a difficult thing so that's all